field of your business. All you had to do was come into the house of God and they yes, knew what to do. That's they knew right. what to, how to pray and they, they knew what to do for the people of God. And as mother was praying for you, I was watching mother on the altar. And after she prayed for you, I saw how she came, she came back. She said, I got to get some for myself. I, I gave out everything that I gave to, to the woman of God, being obedient to God. But now, Lord, I got to get a little bit for myself. And she didn't just stop there. She came over to me and she said, woman of God, obey God. God is with you. Obey God. Do what he told you to do because he's with you. Can I tell you that there are more people that are for us than who, than who are against us? Amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. He said, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Can I be me on today? Can I just be me? Can I just ahead, talk to you ahead. for the next few fleeting moments? When I was coming up, I had some church mothers that they didn't hold you up. They didn't play with you. They said it like it was. They meant what they said. They didn't care nothing about hurting your feelings. They told you the truth because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Make and they you grew free. us up in the fear and the admonition of God. They trained us up in the way that we should go. And they did not give or cater to weakness. They told us like it was. And you couldn't even cry in front of Mother Black men. You couldn't cry in front of Mother Black men. You could not cry. You had to hold them tears. You couldn't even let your lips tremble. You know how you want to cry? Your lips would tremble. You had to stand there and endure hardness as a good soldier. Glory to God. But we can't hardly say nothing now. We can't hardly say anything right now. I'm going somewhere. Y'all don't get, don't, don't, don't leave me just yet. We're going somewhere. And so... The mothers of Zion, they, they, they put something in us. They put something in us. They put something in us that even though the things that are going on in this world now are shaking, the church is shaking, the world is shaking the people. But can I tell you that if God be for you, he is more than the world against you. Amen. Can I tell you that nothing catches God by surprise. Amen. There had to be permission for a pandemic to Come even on. hit the earth. And even in that, God said a thousand shall fall by that side and ten thousand at that right hand, but it shall not come not back. Yeah. You got to yeah. know the word. You got to be on. instant yeah. in season and out of season. Come on. You can't let the enemy bring fear upon you. And the prophet was saying, do not fear because the Lord is with you. He said, who is left among you that saw this house in the first glory? Can I tell you, in order for Christ to come back, there has to be a shaking. He said, I have to do this because if I don't do this, he said, no flesh will be saved. We, we've been having church as usual. Can I just go like I feel? Pastor Allen, we've been having church and we've been taking for granted that we got houses that we didn't build. See? We drive cars that we're not supposed to be in because our credit is jacked up from the flow up. But grace and favor found you at Clay Cooley and put you in a car that you knew that your fight was for. Yes! <laughs> We got family jobs. We got started chasing overtime and undertime and all the time. And we forgot about God. We forgot about God. And when we came to God's house, we, we gave him just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little dab would do you. Just enough just to say that I went to the house of God. But God says I'm raising up the people in this last day that's going to bring in the glory of God. Who is left among you that saw this house in the first glory? Who is left among you that saw the pastors on fire? Saw the elders and the deacons on fire? Saw the deacons opening up the church and they didn't have to wait for the mothers to get to the church. Come on. Somebody would come in and begin to sing a song and then the other brother would begin to pray and they begin to set an atmosphere. We need some atmosphere set us. Come on. do a lot of complaining about what is and what wasn't and what we should be doing. If you won't change the happen, change gotta begin with you. Yes. If you don't see the mothers praying, come on in the house and start praying. How about don't wait till you get to the house of God pray in your house. Yes. That's what this pandemic has been all about. God yes. has brought families back together. Yes. He's brought families back to the table. You didn't want to deal with your children. You sent them to school and let the teachers deal with them and then gave the teachers a hard time. But God let you see what your children were really like. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Tell it. Found out that Susie wasn't so sweet. Tell and Johnny wasn't it. such <laughs> a little boy. Amen. Oh, I'm about to get in trouble now, Pastor Allen. Oh, 
two long months. For some folks, it was wrong. It was long. It was long. It was a long time. You ever going back to work, honey? <laughs> what they say? That's what some folks said. That's what some folks said. But I got up in the morning time. I said, honey, what you want to eat for breakfast? And before I could get breakfast done, I said, what you want for lunch? Then I said, what you want for dinner? Y'all see that on him? He, y'all see that on him? <laughs> That's called love. All right. All right. I don't just love that man. I like that man. <laughs> so the pandemic worked for me, mother. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me. It worked for me. Made me appreciate things that we take for granted. Right. Uh -huh. Kiss each other going by on the way to work. Talk to each other on your break. Don't see each other all day. And then something happened, and somebody's gone, and you wish that you could have, would have, did it. Right. Couldn't have done that, but you didn't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I found out, Lady Allen, I found out that Brother Henderson could cook. Right. That man can scramble an egg. <laughs> oh, yes, he can. <laughs> oh, yes, he can. <laughs> I was going from work. I work overnight. I said, Oh, I feel some breakfast. <laughs> Make your request known. Yeah. So I'd like some breakfast, but I'm so tired. Yeah. Women, I'm helping somebody that ain't even married yet. I'm helping. Oh, them. see, yeah. see. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, honey, uh, I like, you know what? I think I like some toast. I like some toast and some jelly. Amen. I know what I got in the refrigerator because I put it in there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sunday night. We were in church on a Sunday night. And there was, I was telling the saints, I'm tired of leaving church early, going to work. Mother, I got a text that said, you are laid off until further notice. Say. I was shouting like Junior was shouting today. <laughs> and can I tell you that the Lord said, whatever it is that you're asking him for, you got it today. You got it in your place. You got it today. You, wasn't care. you didn't worry about who was around you, who was next. You went for yours and God said, it's your praise that's going to open up doors. It's going to open up windows. It's going to knock out windows for you in this season. Glory, hallelujah. And so we got that, that we got that text message that we've been laid off until further notice. Then I then I called the unemployment and I saw how much I was gonna be getting. I said, Lord, I got to get back to work. But don't you know that we serve a God who said, Fear not, for I am with you. Yeah. All of a sudden he created something in the midst of a pandemic called a pandemic unemployment pay. When they gave us an extra six hundred dollars a week. Come on, somebody. <laughs> He did that for the people of God. Sat at home. Called unemployment. Can I tell you, it scared me when they told me how much I was going to get. I said, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. I didn't know that they had given an increase. Don't you know that God will give you more than enough? He will bless you in the time of economic recession. Sister Price, he showed me, he said, I, I want to teach you in this hour how to be a better steward over what I'm blessing you with. Yeah. I'm going to give you overflow so you learn how to save some for a rainy day. Can I tell you, don't spend everything that you got. You better get you a grip container and put you a $20 bill every now and then in that grip container. Because as sure as I'm standing here, Elder Howard is coming, Pastor Brigham is coming. Yeah. And he's going to tell you that a recession is coming. He gonna tell you that this dark day is coming. But God said he never suffered the righteous to be born. David said, I was old and now I'm young. He said, I was young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken and received bread and bread. Then let me tell you how to live off of beans and cornbread. My husband said, I didn't like pinto beans, but I love your pinto beans, girl. Don't you know that God will bless the little when you be a good steward of it? Glory, hallelujah. He's teaching us. He's teaching us. He's teaching us. He said, how do you see this now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? He's saying that you, 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 you chase in the old glory, but I'm a, I'm a God that I'm always doing something new. He said, remember not the former things. Behold, I do a new thing. He said, I'm doing a new thing in you. I'm doing a new thing in the world, in the earth. And we talk about in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers yep. of God. They will be heady, high-minded. They will be blasphemous. They will be boastful. Yep. But don't you also know that he said in his word, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit on yeah. all Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to see dreams and see visions and dream dreams. Don't you know that God is preparing the church for something? Yeah. He said, you have, you have the witness of the old church. You have the witness of what their glory was. He said, but I want to give you your own experience. And it's not going to be church as usual. You're not going to be able to come into the house of God and do what you did before, thinking that you're going to get the same result. He said, in this season, this is going to be for the people who really want something. Can y'all walk with me to Romans 8 and 18? He said, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in you. There's a greater glory that's coming. But can I tell you that there's some suffering that we got to go through. There's some tests, some trials, and some storms that we got to withstand. He said, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land. Can I tell you today that God wants us to be strong and of a good courage? He said, be thou very strong and be thou very courageous. He told Joshua and Joshua 1, for the Lord thy God is with you. But so wherever you go, don't you know that we can't go nowhere that God's arm can't go? We can't go into a place that God can't come and pull us out. We can't be in a situation where God can't come and send a remedy. We're worried about a pandemic and God said, I caused this to happen. So that there would be a shift in the earth from yes. Anybody ready for the glory? 
glory. Amen. The glory carriers. He said, I want to give you a double portion of my glory. He said, I want to give you a double portion of the glory that you thought you knew of. He said, I'm giving you generation accrual of, growth, of glory. Don't you know when he says your children, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy and see dreams and dream dreams. Don't you know God says I'm going from your generation to the next generation. Yeah. And I'm going to the next generation. Yeah. This is a generational transfer of his glory. He said I gave it to you and you don't really want to handle it. But I'm going to give it to these millennials. I'm, a, I'm not preaching better than I'm talking better than the people are saying amen. I'm going to look at you, Brother Junior. He said, I'm going to give my glory to these millennials. Because, see, they think the millennials are crazy. They think the millennials are out of order. But the millennials don't understand why you sit back and let the things happen that you let happen. Yeah. Why you let injustice go on in the land? Why you let cops kill black folks? Why you let all this stuff go on and you're not saying nothing? It took a 17-year-old girl with a smartphone. They took a picture of a cop that said the man was being defiant and he was being resistant. And if they had only had the police's report, we would not know who George Floyd was. But because a 17-year-old, a millennial said, you can't have my phone. But my mama bought me this phone. And she wouldn't surrender her phone. She gave the phone to the media. And the media began to release things. And the whole earth to respond to what was going on. The millennials say, I don't understand how you can just sit back and let all this stuff happen. We gotta do something. We gotta get up. So God said, I'm gonna raise up some people that's not comfortable with their titles and their positions and all the accolades. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble because I do this myself. Don't worry, don't worry. The nice clothes and the big hats. God said, I just shut all that down. Yeah. Now you got to wear a face mask. Uh-huh. It's okay, nobody see you. Hey. He said, forget all this tradition of men. Uh-huh. All this stuff that have crept into my house. Well, he said, all I've, done, all I've done is done what Jesus did in the New Testament. Uh-huh. He said, I whipped them out of the temple. Yeah. And had you make your own houses an altar. Anybody prayed in your house since the pandemic? Yeah. Anybody read your word in the house since the pandemic? Yeah. Anybody come together in your house since the pandemic? All things. Romans 8 and 28 yeah. says, and we know all things. 